Good morning, everyone, and welcome to FCCJ. My name is Ilgin Yorulmaz. I'm a freelance journalist from Turkey and also serve as the second vice president of FCCJ. May I remind you that this event is being live streamed, so please turn off your mobile phones or switch them to silent mode. Also, please keep your masks on, uh, especially when you're speaking uh, to other people. Um, FCCJ is committed to highlighting diversity at a every level of Japanese society. It is for this reason that we are very happy to host today's speaker, Satoko Kishimoto, as the newly elected mayor of Suginami City, one of the 23 municipalities of Tokyo metropolitan area. Kishimoto-san has been in office for just one week, I suppose, but she's a true trailblazer let me remind you some of the firsts that Kishimoto-san became since her election victory in June. She is the first female mayor of Suginami City, um, and it's over 570,000 residents. Um, the first Japanese politician also to have campaigned in under two months, <laughs> uh, thanks to a grassroots movement, uh, and won the election and also the first mayor in any of Tokyo wards so far to commute to work by bicycle. Kishimoto-san studied environmental sociology and was employed by the research organization, the Transnational Institute. She worked on seeking alternatives to water, health, and energy privatization. She supports the use of public services to combat income. Uh, inequalities, climate change, and political instability. So in a way, she represents a change, um, being a woman who mixes a Japanese mindset with a Western way of problem solving. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please join me to welcome um, Mayor of Suginami City, Satoko Kishimoto. Yes, please. Thank you so much uh, for introducing myself, me, and uh, first of all, I really, I'm so pleased to be here. Uh, thank you, uh, FCJJ, uh, for having me here. Uh, the, I have um, distributed a one page of paper, which has uh, five, six resources, which you can um, uh, scan the, the uh, QR code. The, the I think the second one uh, the, from Japan Times. This is not my article, of course, and but I wanted to to share with you because uh, it's talked about um, the city of Koenji. Koenji is one of the, the uh, town in Suginami, and uh, you can see the uh, this. I'm I'm sure this um, um, writer really loves Koenji. So the, that's a background information. The, the, there are some controversial projects, uh, including Koenji. So you can see the, the, poly, um, the context of the urban development project in Koenji and other uh, places. So let me begin. Um, I won the Suginami City uh, mayor election. I received more than 76,000 votes and defeated the current mayor by a margin of 187 votes. This means almost that same number of people voted for the other two candidates. The voting rate is very low. It was 32 points, percent, sorry. But this time, it has increased to 37 percent. Still, you can see that more than 60% of voters did not vote. This is because local um, the mayor election, which is separated from the, the other local election, which is happening, happening next year, and also from national election. So that's, uh, that's a bit um, the context. Uh, I must understand and study the current administration and dialogue with many local people because so many people didn't vote, didn't support me. Especially, I would like to dialogue with and listen to people who didn't, did not vote for me. I was a candidate, I was a candidate supported by Citizen Coalition, consisting of local grassroots groups. The election campaign was also supported by seven progressive national and local parties. 
you may notice that uh, my election campaign was really creative and driven by w many women, also uh, the very sensitive, sensible men. I have wondered why the international press has paid so that much attention to the Suginami Meiya election, which is just one local um, uh, the election. One of the answers uh, I, I, was, um, I am thinking is, has to do with women in politics in Japan. Uh, just like, let me give you a bit um, statistics how um, the women in politics in Japan is so underrepresented. It is often said national parliament, the 10% uh, in lower house and the 20% in upper house, uh, the women, uh, the Congress, Congress women is represented. But if you look at local politics, particularly the mayor's level, this percentage goes down dramatically. Japan has 1,811 municipalities, including prefecture and the, uh, from prefecture to village, including 23 Tokyo uh, uh, special wards. Only 44 mayors, <laughs> which is 2% of the all uh, local government, uh, the women mayor represent 2%. And uh, um, yes, uh, if you look at 23 this uh, ward in, in, in Tokyo, there is only one woman mayor in Adachiku. Mm. And I am the first female mayor of Suginami since it has started governing 90, 90 years. And look at also not only um, the gender imbalance, but also age. You also, I think, as a journalist, uh, know that Japanese politics is dominated by old men. The concerning, uh, sorry, the concerning uh, 23 Tokyo awards, words, the average age of mayors is 67 years old, mm -hmm. and uh, the 70s is the biggest number, number in the range, age range which is 40%. Mm. Okay, the World Economic Forum just recently presented the latest gender gap indicators on 13 of July. Japan is number 116 out of 156 countries. It is the, obviously the worst in the G7 countries and the worst in the 19 Asian Pacific countries, including Southeast Asia. Um, when uh, the agenda indicators consist of different indicators, but the, in, in, in total, Japan is 116. But if you look at the politics, in, uh, politics and women, the number even goes uh, the lower. So number, uh, number goes even the 139. So another factor of this exceptionally lo low score of gender imbalance, gender balance, has to do with female number of management in corporations, not only politics. So this is a bit context, I think, the Suginami Meiya election got a lot of attention, uh, especially internationally. Look at the, let me look at the, the, in case of Suginami City, there is no female chief in the leading 10 department, chief directors, no women. And the four special positions, such as vice mayors, is all men except me. I learned a, um, the serious, serious lack of women workers in management in general. Another thing I learned from the last two weeks is high age in the highest position in the management. That's the case of Suginami City Hall. The Suginami City basically represents typical Japanese organization. 
Nevertheless, if you look at the Suginami City Council, the gender balance is not as bad as you would think. There are 15 female city councillors out of 47. Oh, sorry. Okay, I'm maybe be talking about too much gender. <laughs> So by the way, I, I used to work in international policy research NGO based in Amsterdam for the last 80, 18 years. Here, it's a bit another extreme. So my organization, 60% workers are women, mm. <laughs> and five top positions are all women, including myself. And I come from, you may know that I came from Belgium uh, which made a, made a cabinet last year. So 10 ministers, all women, out of 20, 50%. So the average age of the cabinet is 44 years old, which is prime minister is also 44 years old. Anyway, so that's a bit um, context, um, contrast in a way, uh, the, 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 the society I came from. Uh, then now I'm challenging myself as a mayor uh, in Isaginami City. Let me touch um, as well uh, a bit about um, the privatization and the public services uh, the Irigens and also uh, introduced. I have studied and also I do activism on this area last 15 years, basically how to the proof failed privatization model, why and how, and what would be alternative, especially the, the, the area of water, energy, healthcare, and education. The, the, the first article uh, in the, the, the document, uh, sorry, the paper is my article uh, by the Social Europe, which I explained the, my research, the latest research project, and uh, the, the reasons why so many municipalities, local government has turned into uh, turn the reverse, the privatization model into public management. And also, I, I discussed about the not only the talking about ownership, rather talking about democratization of public services. Mm. So that's my life work. The, the last 40 years neoliberal experiment, compounded by the austerity policies, was long enough to prove in Europe that not only the PPP, private public private uh, partnerships, are most expensive and they require, they require sacrifice of transparency and, um, and the commercial confidentiality, they sacrifice the, the citizens' um, accountability and transparency. They also uh, reduce or and erode the public sector capacity to coordinate public policies from climate change uh, to ex social exclusion. We need radically to rethink, rethink our approach and a new paradigm should at the same time address climate safety and social, in, uh, social equality. Well, when I look at um, the, the policies in local government in, in Isuginami, there are significant, strong policy and finance incentive from Tokyo government and national government to privatize public services. The example, if when the city of Isuginami wants to make one kindergarten, public kindergarten, 100% finance has to, be, has to come from the city budget. But if you make private kindergarten, one, only you, the city has to pay one ace. They're basically, yeah, 80%, how much? The, the other part come from the subsidy from Tokyo and national government. Mm. You can under, they understand? That's the strong incentive, financial incentive for the local government to privatize the kindergarten, for instance, but other things as well. So another big issue uh, in Suginami, which is uh, the, the point of the election, is urban big project, including roads. This is same structure, 
the Tokyo government, and national, especially Tokyo government, has given a lot of subsidy to build big roads, which is linked with big uh, urban project. So this is the context. The local government have a strong incentive, also read, um, uh, almost forced to, to follow certain policies of the, 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 the public service privatization and continue the big urban road project. That's the same in Suginami. So last piece, I, I already uh, spoke 15 minutes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, still. Okay, that's I also, the, the one of the, my point I um, campaigned for is about labor, labor force. The, the city of Suginami employs 6,000 workers. Roughly speaking, 3,500 are official, officially employed. And 2,500 are unprotected casual workers. This proportion is nearly identical to the entire Japanese labor market. Basically, 40% of workers are not protected and bear precarious working conditions. That's something I want to challenge. I believe same labor, same wage principles. The workers in Suginami, especially a lot of women, are employed, 90% of casual workers are women working in care sector. They do very responsible jobs to protect people's life um, and, and people's life. So I personally believe the all workers, uh, the especially care work when the women has to be changed. But of course, this is very, very difficult challenge um, the, because, excuse <laughs> Well, for instance, I try to utilize the, the, the public contract uh, audience, which Suginami fortunately has. Which uh, the, the the city can uh, purchase service and goods with cert under certain condition to protect uh, the, the workers' wage, mm. but Tokyo the minimum wage of Tokyo is 1,041 yen per hour, which is seven dollars, 7.5 dollars. So Suginami alone cannot increase this minimum wage because we have to be you know, to work together, work together for other, other, other words. So there are a lot of challenges. And I campaigned for 1,500 yen per hour, which is uh, 11 US dollars. I mean, now yen is uh, reducing a lot, so it sounds, sounds lower. But this is also related to national policy. The, the 1,500 yen was the campaign for many opposition parties. But that, um, that the ruling party is, is not supporting. So the, as a local government, to change this kind of uh, the minimum wage is extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I would li love to challenge the, the particularly the, the care workers and women and casual workers in Suginami uh, as much as I can. So um, last two weeks already, I have started the discussion with departments and um, the chief uh, directors and the staff uh, are very serious to, to discuss on the issues I, pro um, I made a promise in the election campaign. So I'm really happy with um, the, the staff in Suginami City. They are very serious and capable people. So they, I wanted to work, keep working with them to mm -hmm. step by step to achieve uh, the, something I promised. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Kishimoto-san. Now, um, to give a little bit of context, um, Suginamiku is one of the 23 um, wards of Tokyo. Um, and it's quite interesting. I guess it's more of a liberal activist kind of um, <laughs> war to have obviously elected also um, yourself. Now, um, 
in the past we know that they actually appealed towards you know or against nuclear weapons and you know fighting against nationalist uh, textbook revisionism um, but if I may just open up the discussion and, and then give it to the floor for comments and questions, what really prompted you to leave uh, a top position at a research agency um, in Belgium to make a run for mayor in local government? And what is the first thing you did when you assumed office last week? Yeah, one of the biggest motivation I came back to Japan and to run the election, well, I always wanted to work for democracy in Japan. And the local politics um, is that, the, uh, let's say, kind of a possible way to change radically. At least there is a potential. Um, and also last 10 years I have studied, by the way, I'm not academic, I'm an, I am a, uh, the activist and the researcher. Last 10 years, I spent a lot of time how to change local politics from the grassroots citizen power. So that's, I'm calling, uh, we are calling municipalism, for instance. Mm -hmm. So that's the growing movement in Europe and Latin America and North America too. So I have been uh, in the, putting myself in this movement. And when I look at the Suginami and I heard the, from people what they are facing to the local issues, such as public services, childcare, road project, urban, urban planning, all kind, you know, the things that I heard uh, are really like uh, something has to change. So mm -hmm. I felt I can, I could do something with them and for them. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the reason. And the, the, what I did first uh, since I, I assume office is basically I'm learning. I'm learning the what has been the plans in the Suginami city, because there are, you know, the, the, the city administration, the public services and our administration, continue, continuation is very, mm. very important. I cannot, we cannot stop something, mm. something going on. We gradually can change, but my first challenge is to be able to understand the, the from different section of the department, from welfare to urban planning. Mm -hmm. And I have to stress myself, I don't have any experience of civil servant as a civil servant nor politician. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a huge challenge to learn, the, especially from staff, the, mm -hmm. how you know, the, the administration is going on. Mm -hmm. And it is very inspiring. And it's, for me, it's an, wow, like uh, such an intensive you know, study for me and a good discussions. I'm so I'm happy with so far. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the floor? Yes. Let's begin with Watanabe-san. Please state your name and your affiliation. Haruko Watanabe, HKW. Can you hear? Yes, yes. we can hear. Yes. Mm. Yeah, uh, congratulations and happy birthday to you. Thank you. You celebrated your birthday this month, right? Uh, just uh, some days ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. Uh, my question is, you know, as Elgin mentioned, Suginamiku is well known, the residents are very conscientious mm. and concerned about democracy in Japan. But Suginamiku's slogan or the advertising copy and attached to the local, uh, local right is nami de nai sugi nami. <laughs> Means mm. sugi nami ku is not an average. It is such a dull, mediocre slogan for the progressive world like sugi nami. Do you have any plan to organize a slogan a contest <laughs> and to get the new image of Suginamiku, since you mentioned such a fresh new project to renovate or revitalize, or how do you say it? it Democratize. To, uh, yeah, <laughs> to bring uh, a big way to Suginami. Suginami is not na Nami. Suginamiku is not Nami de nai Suginamiku. Suginamiku is super. Mm, thank you. Yes, thank and you. we have such a, 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 such a plan to organize the project of uh, getting those uh, Suginamiku uh, 
Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, so, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's uh, thank you for pointing that. Well, I didn't. Uh, I know another slogan. Midori no yutaka na sumai no miyako. Too long. <laughs> this is about the green and the livable green city of Suginami. But nami de nai Suginami, I guess, is excep exceptional Suginami. No. All right. Okay. <laughs> now today we have uh, the chief director of the the communication, public communication. So we're gonna to discuss about that. So the then maybe I didn't plan to make something new uh, on that. The but I certainly will discuss with uh, the, the, the the chief of department. Thank you. Any questions from the floor? Okay. Let's go <laughs> first. Uh, please, Dennis. Yes, okay, and, a, <laughs> and a resident, I believe, of Suginamiku. Please introduce yourself, Dennis. Yes, uh, my, my name is Dennis Normile. I'm a correspondent for Science Magazine, and I live in Ogikubo, which means that uh, you are my mayor. <laughs> Even though I can't vote, if I had been able to vote, I would have voted for you. I used to write quite a bit about Japan's construction industry. And as you know, it's very technically strong, very competent. It also has very strong political power. The road projects that you have mentioned, these are national initiatives, I believe. And I believe that to a very large extent, the major construction companies, the construction industry has great influence in promoting that kind of construction. What can you do as mayor of Suginami to try to reorient the construction industry towards more people-oriented, community-oriented projects rather than these major road projects? Thank you. Well, you're right that the power and kind of systematic structural power of the, the, the construction ministry. Also, the Tokyo government is powerful. Um, I told you about not only power, it's also finance. So my strategy on this, of course, I cannot say anything if I can do how much I can do as a mayor. However, my strategy is I want to mainstreaming climate crisis climate change in the local politics. Today, the many progressive local government in the world and the cities, mega cities, the challenge, this, the climate change is a central challenge. Mm -hmm. And what they are doing is not making a new road, of course. They are challenging to limit cars into the city. This is a very difficult challenge but I know many municipalities, Amsterdam too, to, to take this challenge to reduce the, 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 the cars in the city by having regulations. Well, that's the, the world context because we have to be extremely serious about climate change. 2015, 50, sorry. We have to make a, the decarbonization. This is enormous challenge. Tokyo, Japan, Suginami all declared that this zero carbon uh, city, but doesn't it? In my view, it doesn't have a life there or real plans. That that's only declarations, including Jap Japanese government. Mm -hmm. But we know that this to achieve this political goal is we need social trans transformation about industry, economy, culture and politics. So in, in this my understanding, the local government has to be serious in urban planning to begin with climate change, to tackle climate change. So then the plan looks very different. But this is my view and um, well, like the, I need to see how much the discussion can happen because we don't have so much time. Mm. 
we have to achieve 2030 of the, to have the, 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 the 50 percent of carbon dioxide. Mm-hmm. So, the, but this is for me fundamental challenge. Um, if I may ask uh, a question from online because it's related to this, and um, <clears throat> David McNeil, uh, who's a freelance journalist, says, uh, my sense is that um, Japanese media makes little attempt to link extreme weather such as heat, typhoons, or also, you know, the record heat in Europe, of course, now, London yeah. and other cities, um, to little attempt to link extreme weather to climate change. Do you agree? And can you explain why? And you've just mentioned some proposals limiting cars. Are there any other concrete proposals that you would make to alleviate the impact of climate change in Tokyo? Very shortly. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> well, extreme weather is a real daily issue in Japan. I mean, Jap- Japan is disaster, you know, the, the intensive country. Mm. Not only the, the old extraordinary weather, but also we face to earthquake uh, threat every day. So um, the, the, as a local government, as, as an old government, that has to be a central issue. Mm. And the climate change and the disaster mitigation has to, has to go uh, the, the step, how do you say, along together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's obvious. That's the case in the, in the, the, the departments uh, in the local government are serious about that, mm. about to, to make a plan, the, 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 the mitigation of the disasters. But I find the problem is they are depending on too much about big roads. So my vision, the, 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 because ta- making a road takes 10 years from now on, 10, 10 20 years project. So what happened tomorrow, the huge earthquake comes. That's something we have to think about. So uh, Suginami's beauty is that the people's network and the communities are very, very strong around the schools, around Shotengai, which is the old shopping streets. Yeah. There are so many the shopping, little, little shop street, which is quite unique in Tokyo. All kind of you know, schools and communities are very strong based on the, you know, the, the local activism. I think Suginami's treasure and the, the uniqueness is that that's the strongest community power and the networks. So I believe uh, uh, the, the disaster medi- uh, mediation, uh, the, mm. the response response to disaster has to be based on the people's network and the, the community's resistance, which are there. So mm-hmm. better not to break that by having a roads, mm-hmm. rather to build and support mm-hmm. communities' power and uh, existing if social infrastructure, that's um, one of the, my answers. So would the Japanese media then be interested? Because that's also part of the question. Oh. Um, there is no yeah, interest. Well, <laughs> I think Japanese, I mean, not only Japanese media, but the, the, the general consciousness and knowledge uh, of climate change, particularly in Japan, is unfortunately very low. I don't know what is the reasons. There are many reasons, but it definitely one of the certain one of the reasons is the central government. Mm. They don't care climate change seriously. But that's that's only one factor. So we need to have different level of the governments and the institutions and the educational institutions as well to take seriously, this climate change as a global and human challenge, which is really the case. Mm-hmm. So that's the layers, layers of uh, challenges in front of us. But yeah, I, th- I think uh, the, the one of the main key, key challenge is the central government don't mm-hmm. consider the climate mm-hmm. change yes. as a, as a uh, the real threat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, any Okay, Pio, and then Sayuri, please. (coughs) 
Bonjour. Thank you. <laughs> um, welcome to our club. Um, I'm from Italy. I'm representing Italian TV. <clears throat> Italy is a country that is very similar, uh, very low level of gender uh, parity opportunity like Japan. But we did solve technically somehow. We did climb that, uh, that list uh, recently with uh, a very technical uh, system like imposing a 50% quota on women on any single <coughs> election, local, municipality, and national. It did work to increase our rate. Now we are about 60 and you are still under 100, but it doesn't change really the picture. So my question is <coughs> about, uh, I have two questions. The first is about uh, women uh, uh, empowerment. My impression, I live in Japan since 40 years, so my impression is that uh, Japanese women are not <clears throat> like in Afghanistan or some other countries, you know, held hostage and obliged to accept certain situations. There is no law that obliges a woman to <clears throat> resign when she becomes pregnant. Actually, there are laws that forbid that. But still, as you know, most of the people, most of the women give up and so on. So don't you think there is an issue about education here? At low level, since kindergartens, school, high school, and then on the media. You know, if you have a look at uh, these women magazines, like uh, Nono, uh, Hanako, or uh, Har Larm, or whatever, I sometimes give, you know, have a look. I mean, this is totally stupid. I mean, uh, no, in Italy, we don't have such magazines anymore. The issues that they take up, uh, you know, standing in front of Ichimaro Q in Shibuya for hours, I mean, don't you think we, you should do something as a political person, at least at proposal level, to change this habit? And then the second one is a very technical one. <clears throat> um, I know that in Japan, there are some, uh, in Tokyo, there are some municipality where LGBT uh, issues are a little bit more seriously taken care of. I was wondering, I was asking if Suginamiku has uh, uh, the chance for same-sex couple to marry, I mean, dose show and uh, concubinage or whatever. And if not, if you are planning to establish it. Thank you. Thank you. So please. Um about the education and media. Yeah. <laughs> okay, first. let me answer the, the last, last question first, first. LGBTQ. Okay. Yes, I plan, we plan. The, in Suginami, uh, currently, we don't have partnership agreement. Okay. What is partnership agreement? This is not about marriage, the same-sex marriage. This is far away from that. Exactly, exactly. There are 10... The Tokyo Awards have had already partnership agreement, yes. mm. but don't confuse. This is not the mar marriage. This is only the, a recognition as the same-sex partners mm -hmm. are just recognized. Yeah, but they entitle some rights. For example, True. Hospital exactly. Exactly, which is very important. Yeah. So, but still, as you know, in Japan, the, the same-sex marriage is not allowed. Even, you know, like uh, the women to forced to change the name. I mean, one when men and women. Mm, the last it, name. So you plan to establish a partnership agreement? Yes, okay. which is possible in, as a local government. Yeah. Okay. And even Tokyo government has introduced recently on this. Okay. So the, my, one of the first things I can do is to introduce the, the same sex, uh, the, the partnership registration, I mean, agreement. Mm -hmm. I would like to include the marriage of, how do you call that? Not legal marriage, yes. but Probably. the civil. Yeah. yeah. How do you call that in English? I'm. Yeah, I'm yeah, civil, uh, <laughs> which is, you know, not legally marriage. Civil partnership. But partnership, yeah, living of. together, yeah. committed to each other. Mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. Japanese, jujitsu kon. Yes. So, so. Okay. So that can be also included. De facto marriage, yes. Yeah, marriage. In, yes. in the partnership arrangement. And there is a good support on that. In, uh, I am quite confident 
the, to, to be able to introduce partnership agreement in Suginami City. And then the first question is very, very difficult to answer. You know that. <laughs> mm. Very sh shortly, your, your view? Well, the media, uh, yeah, media in Japan, I think you, you must have a lot of s to say, and I do, uh, too. But this is not something, you know, the mayor can do easily. And also the consciousness, I mean, the kind of socially constructed gender, you know, the imbalance, as you said, it's not the women not legally forbidden many things, not we are forced, we are, we are not tortured. However, the, the actual life in, the, in, the, the, in school, in the corporation, in the city, the public work, and in the family mm. is systematically constructed of gender equality, inequality, which is deep. So, uh, but things are changing, clearly. We, I feel so. And it's, it's um, not, it's, that, that's why I think political initiative, especially in this case, national level, is very, very important because in, you know, the state has to recognize the, 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 about the, the diversity, about the LGBTQ, and about gender, gender equality. So that's come to the, you know, of course, education. Uh, it has impact a lot of in educations. But I, I also don't, don't believe too much about states. You know, like uh, we, our life is, you know, the, we have local life. We have, you know, the, a lot of... Uh, civil society uh, activities, so the, the, the gender issue, but other issues, the kind of grassroots, also private, you know, like uh, the civil society can do a lot. So mm -hmm. that's, I believe. Um, Sayuri, you have a question, I guess, please. Hi, uh, thank you. Um, my name is Sayuri Diamond. I'm a freelancer and a former Japan Times managing editor. Hello. Um, I have two uh, questions, related questions. Uh, you mentioned about the gender equality, and thank you so much for talking about gender equality so extensively. I, I feel the same. Anyway, um, my first question is that um, could you tell us um, how you are going to achieve gender equality in Suginami? because you talk so much about it. And is there any specific plan that you want to implement? For example, like including certain number of women in every meeting or, you know, there's so many things that maybe you can do. And that's one question. And the second one is about uh, yourself. Like during, um, I would like to know um, whether you have any faced challenges because you are women during the course of election campaign, as well as the time that you actually, you know, became the ma mayor. Thank you. Thanks. The, what I can do uh, in, in practice, the first thing I have to do is to really make uh, Suginami City working environment is easier for women to do, to, to, to comfortable for women to, to work. Um, because the reality, um, it takes time because I do want to have women, you know, the management, the higher level of staff, but there are hierarchy, you know, the, the city, city hall has a huge hierarchy and women is not at the position yet the, to, be, to be able to uh, step up. So it takes time because there is regulations that's not something I can do, like pick up, you know, women to, to, to put in the, the, the chief of department. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, you can nominate, appoint. Well, yeah, at a certain level, yes. I, uh, you can be a mayor for three times. Yeah. What, what do you mean? You can, you can make yourself a mayor three times. In 12 years, you can educate. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, that way. Okay. Think of it long, yes, long term. Not but I have to win, win the election, though. <laughs> <laughs> you use the common position. Right. Yeah. But my plan is the following. So I do need to talk with women staff. What they are facing to, what is the situation, why they, they feel they are not 
mm, mm. don't feel like uh, doing a high level jobs. There, mm. there must be reasons. Mm. And also empowerment is very necessary. They, they, they need the confidence. They need opportunities to train themselves and they need to opp have the opportunity to represent you know, different like public speaking for instance. But that's also the case in any society, right? And women are often not given a chance. Although mm -hmm. that then men always have a chance that they are trained more. Mm -hmm. But when you give opportunities, we, we all know that women perform really well often. Yeah. It's under, uh, it's a potential is underdeveloped, uh, underfound. So that's, I believe. So uh, I do actively uh, that internally in the city to empower and talk with women staff. So then to try to find the, the, the causes, cause the, mm -hmm. the, the, the people who feel, you know. Kishimoto-san, do you think being mm -hmm. a part-timer, not being secure of their job, mm -hmm. you mentioned 90% uh, of you know, uh, part-timers are women. Do you plan to turn these part-timers into maybe full-time employees? <laughs> well, if I, the, the, at, the, at the form of my job, mm -hmm. you know, as a researcher, I insist it. <laughs> But because no. this is my main work as a researcher and activist, how to, how to organize public sector, mm. the, actually all society, to do the workers are protected. The, mm. So I believe unionism, unionism of course. So that's, that's, I can say a lot as an as a individual researcher. But as a mayor, of course, that should, could, is slightly different. Mm. I need to understand the regulations, why it has become like that. Yeah. And also, there, there is a national regulation, how to employ public workers, which has changed the, the mm. re lately. So that's basically, in, in principle, those casual workers has to make new contract every year. Yeah. Every year. Every. In practice, they can continue five years. In case of Suginami, six years. But still, that's six years. Every year they have to. And how about the challenges you're facing? I think we're running out of time, oh, yeah. so I just wanted to... Yeah. How about the challenges you, you faced uh, during the campaign? I think that was the second question from During Sayuri. campaign? During campaign and also now. Oh, well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think everything was challenge. <laughs> I had to... Not because of Not really. I don't think so. Not, not because of a woman. I, I didn't feel like uh, I was um, the... Uh, I had a challenge on that. Or even like that was advantage for me, my, my election campaign really stressed that, to, that we want to have women mayor. So that, that, that's what the kind of momentum we had. Mm -hmm. But what I was, um, my challenge was anything else, 99%, you know, like I was not supported by any big organizations, even including trade unions. Mm. So my support is, very much individuals and supported by particularly by women and the grassroots movement mm. in, in in generally speaking i mean especially japanese election local election this condition to win is exceptional mm. there's a question from nikkei asia's andrew sharp about this grassroots movement and he says there have been many grassroots political campaigns over the years and they have certainly achieved some success at the local level, but still, post-war national politics have been dominated by the LDP. The question is, do you think it's possible in contemporary Japan for a grassroots movement to rise up and challenge the LDP on a national level? National level. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. This is, um, well, I, I think grassroots movement are rooted locally. Okay, and they are primarily to uh, work, you know, locally and change the local relationships. However, it is so important at the same time those local movement being connected and, you know, like uh, the networked. Mm. So that's the the what well like uh, come to the nuclear policy, for instance, and also probably you definitely. Um, we have to see how it's going to be about the funeral. I mean, so uh, how do you express the, the, the 
former prime ministers. Oh, yeah. Yes. Mr. Abe's, yeah. how the, the funeral mm -hmm. now is being proposed mm -hmm. to be a national funeral. Mm. Not proposed, it's decided. Not mm -hmm. yet. <laughs> mm. So I think uh, that this is a huge challenge as a kind of, you know, the, the grassroots movement, I mean, civil society, mm. who, which is primarily, I mean, particularly grassroots ones, they're, they're dealing with local issues. But there are many issues are so interconnected and also national level policies are so much to do with. Um, then also th there are not many national coalitions, civil society coalitions. The, I, yeah, what is the question again? <laughs> no, I think that was, you know, the challenges you're facing and, and, um, and you did mention. Um, now, I would like to ask two questions online, and then I'll uh, also ask uh, anyone on the floor to please uh, ask any questions. The, very shortly, I'm going to ask them, and please answer shortly if you can. Um, this is from Fed Varko, uh, who's a freelance journalist. Some towns and municipalities aren't very helpful toward non-Japanese-speaking residents. Is this a national problem that needs to be corrected, and how are you planning to make life easier for foreign residents in Suginamiku? And he has one more question, again, very briefly, if you can address that. It's common knowledge that departments and local authorities always want to maintain their budget, even when their needs are reduced and there's no justification for having the same budget. With a declining population, this is obviously not sustainable. So the question is, how are you going to address this issue of declining revenues due to declining population and inflated spending? So two questions, one about non-Japanese speaking residents and declining revenues and inflated spending. How are you going to balance your budget? Okay. Thank you. The, the, the non-Japanese non non residents, mm -hmm. as we know, it's significant numbers. In Suginami, 2.6% of population is not none not Japanese, mm -hmm. uh, non-Japanese residents. The, the, I th there are a lot of things to do. The, one of the issues they are facing most critically is the housing, housing discrimination. Mm -hmm. I want to do something about, but this is uh, one thing. Mm -hmm. But probably the most obvious thing I, uh, the, is, has to happen is to really in, include the non-Japanese residents in the consideration and in a plan of the, the natural disaster. Mm. So natural disasters we talked about, there are a lot of education, a lot of information, a lot of preparations as a local government. And there are a lot of attention to, you know, the, the, the people who need special attention, like uh, children or, or mm. the, the handicapped people. In this special attention group of people, the foreigners are not included. So I talked with the, 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 the department. The foreigners, they may not understand English. Mm -hmm. In Suginami, there are many Nepalese uh, population. Mm -hmm. So they may understand Japanese, but not, not the same level as native. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I proposed the, to include they fall in uh, the residents actively and consciously in the plan of the paying attention group in the, the disaster uh, the mitigation planning. Hmm. And how do you plan to balance your budget while doing oh, yeah. these things? Well, that, that's, uh, that's a very, mm, how to answer that? Well, this is a huge pleasure. I mean, the, the, the basically uh, the austerity, that's about the austerity. Mm to reduce public spendings because, okay, po population is decreasing and tax revenue are depressing. Mm -hmm. So that's not possible to sustain the same level of the services. That's the point, I think, yes. the, the question. I don't think so. Because there are so much waste, wasted mm -hmm. money. The one of the typical things for me like what? <laughs> Can you give an example? Just is huge ask. development project. Mm. Okay. The amount of the budget of those in Suginami, also there are many, 
is enormous, uncomparable to any welfare services and education. We have to really reconsider what is most important, especially in the climate change, climate crisis context, and diversity, inclusivity. So I'm, I, believe my, I believe that the city budget, the national budget too, is always short. Mm -hmm. But why then always social welfare, welfare education um, has to be cut? Mm -hmm. And why military expense becomes a double? Mm -hmm. Who can answer that? Mm -hmm. I think this is about values and politics. Mm -hmm. The priority what kind of future we want. So then we should not be, should not be trapped by the austerity you know, budget questions because this is about values and visions of society. Thank you. Uh, any final questions? <laughs> Who haven't? Um, just one second, please, because I have to ask. Do you have a comment? Or question, please? Yes, please, quick, quickly, if you can come to the uh, microphone, or do you want a microphone? Um, Kishimoto-san, can you stay five more minutes? Is sure. it possible? Please, because we have questions and comments. フリーランスの小林と申します。あの、女性参画についてですね、日本全体の私 <laughs> 日本日本の人に対しては日本語では日本語で質問したいんですけど。いや、先生、あの、あの、just まあ、高市さんとかですね。え、え、岸本さんのような素晴らしい女性を強力な女性のもっと進出をですね、促す組織っていうか、そういうものをなんか、え、作られるというようなことはいかがでしょうか。so if you can it, rephrase the questions for us, for those yeah, who don't speak English, uh, Japanese. His question is about um, the quarter system, mm -hmm. the elec elec election, the, yes. is that right, Qu quarter yes. system? Like 50% of a candidate has to be women. Yes, yeah? so the 25%, one, yes. you know, that before. kind of a mm -hmm. law, basically, to, enfor to, to for yes. enforce women candidates mm -hmm. uh, the, in the election system. Well, it, we have to. We have to do that, obviously. The, I mean, this is at least the, to, to push up, push, you know, the, the, the percentage of, well, that's not, I think the nation, national level, uh, the, there's some parties already doing, you know, like 50% of candidates, uh, uh, women, you know, like Rikke Mishto, for instance. Well, I, I believe so, personally. The, the, but this is not like uh, something we can do much in the local politics. But what we can, I mean, me as a citizen can do um, is the next election, can, uh, election, local election in next, uh, next year. Mm -hmm. I really wish the, there are a lot of uh, many women candidates to run of city council, for city councils. So that's uh, the the yeah that's something I want to um, support. Okay. Um, okay. So Pio, just very shortly, please, and then um, our president wants to ask a question. And there's one last question. So if I may get maybe another nine minutes, okay? That's I think uh, people, people <laughs> may excellent. mind. Um, please. <laughs> if we you want, want it shorter, I can ask in Italian. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, just a follow-up from the, my first uh, question. Um, I forgot to mention that in one of these magazines, I think it was Nono or Oggi, uh, there was a, a survey about the issue of paternity leave in Japan. As you know, this is another very weak point of Japanese society, less than 10%, despite being the, one of the longest granted, much longer than in Italy, for example, fathers seems not to 
be interested. But according to this survey, which is made mostly by women, are the women that do not want the husband to take the leave. Now, how do you comment this? Because this goes back to what I said. It's not a matter between men and women. It's a matter of culture, shared culture. I, for example, see that sometimes Japanese young, I'm talking about young male, are a little bit more progressive than young women. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Take responsibility for this. Yeah, we can talk about that over in the coffee, you know, for hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this uh, the maternity leave for men that is increasing quite dramatically, and the city of Suginami is also pr um, empowering, encouraging men to take uh, maternity leave, which is positive. So that the survey, I also read that, yeah, yeah the, is that about women don't want to, the husband to be home because they, this, the, the mother ha yeah, has to take care of mm -hmm. husband mm -hmm. as well. So children and husband, you have to take care. The, <laughs> yeah. So that's a quite a real, real, but not always, huh? because many men you know, who are consciously taking maternity leave you know, mm -hmm. really want to commit the bringing up children, right? Mm -hmm. So, which is your, important. Your husband must have helped you. <laughs> Mine? Your husband, but uh, who Obviously. lives in... Obviously. Otherwise, yes. I'm not here, right? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Well, like uh, this, this, because fathers have a right to engage mm -hmm. in bringing up children, right? So that's the... Actually, men are taking the rights to, to get involved in, the, in the, you know, the, especially children and also family affairs. Um, Kishimoto-san, I, I have one very specific question, and um, then the last question, really, from the president. We don't want to uh, um, make you wait any longer. I, I know you are busy. About parents uh, sharing. Now, this is a very specific question. Um, coming from Thomas Budulis, I believe. Sorry, Thomas, from Sunday Morning Herald. He's asking about Suginami City Hall, um, apparently supporting and enabling parental children abduction. He's referring to a case I don't know if you're familiar with, but uh, Scott McIntyre, um, two children abducted by Japanese mother while being fully supported by Suginami City Hall with a fake domestic violence claims. Now, this is his question. You may choose to answer uh, this journalist, maybe outside the uh, perimeters of this press conference, but uh, he's asking why uh, is Suginami City Hall uh, supporting or enabling parental children abductions? That's what he calls. Well, I have no, I have no knowledge on that. Hmm, that's so what I, I have to ask uh, the, the, my staff about. Hmm. So sorry, I cannot answer at this moment. But please do, um, you know, yeah. read about this and sure. answer this journalist question, which sure. is important. But I thought you didn't. You, you, it looked like you didn't uh, have knowledge of the case. That's why. Um, and finally, if our president <laughs> may say a few words and ask any questions. Um, I'm Suvendrini Kakuchi, and as Iligin says, I'm the president, but not for too long, I hope. But I just want to ask for your personal comments, because uh, you know, I'm so glad you're trying to bring a lot of changes. What is the advantage of, being, of coming from outside the country and the disadvantages, if I could have some personal comments on that? Thank you, President. Well, advantage, I, I believe, and I am convinced by myself, is I could see from the distance. I could see the Sugi, at Suginami from the distance. So I don't have to believe something direct, you know, immediately what is, you know, being explained. For instance, urban planning, I am given a lecture, which is something I seem to, seem to have to believe. But I, I know the global debate, how important climate change, the challenge is. Then I started questioned questioned from that point of view. And privatization is issue the same. In Japan, there is a little discussion or evaluation on the last 30, 40 years, privatization of in public services. 
and nobody doubt, little number of people doubt that, but I do have research and I do have you know, global um, experience on that. That's why I, at least I can raise a question and also made, I can make arguments. So that's that advantage. This advantage is obviously, well, through the election campaign, I, am, I don't know the, the, the local issue as much as the local people. Mm. And, um, well, that's the huge disadvantage. But I think I can cover that by learning um, by people, local people and workers. So that's what I, I have said in the election campaign. Um, thank you very much. Um, we have a couple of more questions, but I think I'll email them to you, to your staff, and uh, please answer those um, as well. Uh, Satoko Kishimoto, Mayor of Suginamiku, uh, thank you so much for being with us today, and we wish you good luck in your job. Thank you and so this much. This is uh, for as an appreciation uh, from our club, uh, one year's honorary membership to the Ooh. Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. So please come back and uh, be with us over coffee. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.